Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. Today I've got a brand new batch of really cool ideas from subscribers just like you who send me tips and tricks that they want to share with everyone. Before we head over there, I want to remind you if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I invite you to do that. Now let's get started with these new tips and tricks today. Now this tip comes to us from Stephen. And Honestly, I had to chuckle when I saw this because I thought this was such a brilliant idea. What Stephen says is you can use an old ironing board as a outfeed table for your table saw or whatever else. And you know what? This is a great idea because you can get these at thrift stores for next to nothing. Uh, they're not expensive to buy new. They're easy to move up and down. You can reinforce the legs with something if you want. They're, they're a tiny bit, they can be a tiny bit tippy, but that's easy to fix for most of us. And you know what? You could even put two of them together if you had, you know, a, a wide, is sort of an outfeed area um, and you can move them around to different saws different things because they move up and down so easily I just thought this was a great idea and you know what what a simple way of creating an outfeed table and for those of you who haven't seen this because I did this quite some time ago I made I didn't have a spare ironing board at the time so I actually made a flip up on the back of my saw and it even has a quick release on it so when you're not using it especially for those of us in small shops you can do that but if you don't want to go to that amount of work you can get yourself an old ironing board and it works great this next tip comes from bob and bob says that he uses the camera in his phone to take pictures of different measurements and i think that's a really smart idea because that gives you a quick permanent record of whatever it is that you're working on. I know I use the video in my phone in the workshop from time to time when I have to take something apart, then I have to order parts and then reassemble it later on. It gives me a good quick reference to how things go together. So using the camera in your phone I think is a great idea for a quick instant reminder of what we're doing. This tip comes from John. And John says if you're drilling a hole and you don't want a lot of tear out in the bottom, you want to avoid that, what you can do is drill partway through the top, flip it over, and commence drilling on the other side. That will give you a smooth cut. Now I've done this quite some time ago, but it's worth repeating. The other thing that he says that if you drill a pilot hole on the side, it helps to release the dust and it's much easier to drill a hole. And I've also covered that before in the past, but again, uh, it's worth repeating because it's a really good tip. So I'm going to show you how that works. Now, if I've drawn a circle with my compass, I will drill those dust release holes first of all. But in this case, I'm just going to mark the wood and cut it, which is often what I do. So I've just gone deep enough to mark where the hole is and now I'm going to drill a couple of those dust release holes and I just use a Forstner bit. It really doesn't matter on the size of the bit. A little bit bigger helps. There, and you can see those dust release holes. Now, I haven't compromised the outside of the uh, hole. Uh, I've just cut a couple of release holes in the center. So I'm just going to go a little bit deeper now. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the same on the other side. Uh, and I may have to do a little bit of alignment here, which is often the case. Okay. Now, let's flip out that core for just a second. 
there you can see those holes and now there's a little bit of fuzzies on there but there's no roughness I wouldn't be able to rub my finger around that if that was that rough but you can see how nice and clean that is there's no real bad tear out anywhere along there and now the spot for Stephen. Stephen, thank you for sending in the easiest tip I've ever done. <laughs> and Stephen's suggestion is to use a toiletries bag, and you've seen them. They're uh, sort of long hanging devices with a bunch of pockets in them that you can store things in. And Stephen, I, I don't have one. I haven't been able to find one. Um, but I still thought it was a good idea because there's people out there that could use that. It's a good idea. So there you go. There's Stephen's tip for the day. So this tip comes to us from Bob. Uh, and he said this quite a while ago. And my memory serves me, Bob was from Vancouver. And what he's done is he has added an extension on his miter gauge to make it longer that fits the T-slot. Let me show you that. So a lot of table saws have this little, what they call a T-slot down here. And that is to be able to fit when you have a miter gauge. And some of them come with a little, like a little washer in there. Uh, in, in Bob's case, he actually used a flat bar like this. Now, I thought this flat bar would fit in there, but it isn't. It's just some extra steel that I had laying around. Now I'm not going to take the time and put this together because this isn't the kind of thing that I would typically use and I just don't want to spend the time to sort of recreate this but some of you may be interested in doing something like this and of course the reason for that is it extends the arm of your miter gauge but I have something else that some of you may be interested in that it sort of satisfies the same thing. A couple or so years ago I made this fixed miter gauge and all it is is a sheet of plywood. I did use a plastic runner for the miter bar and I always recommend plastic. I never ever recommend wood because wood expands and contracts. It makes a sloppy fit or it gets too tight so always use plastic. It's super simple to make because all I did was align the miter or, or sorry a carpenter square along one of the miter slots here and then that's what I used to make the back. This took me maybe five minutes to make. It's super accurate every time. It only cuts square, but my, my, my sliding miter only cuts about a foot. This one, I can actually cut 24 inches easily and safely and get perfect square edges every time. Um, so if that's something that might help you, I will put a link. You'll be able to go and see that. That'll come up in this corner. Where is it? Over here. It's going to show up in that corner at the top of your video right there. You'll be able to go and have a look at that uh, and see if that's something you're interested in making. And it'll also be in the article link in the article on Woodwork Web. Well, that concludes my video for today. Lots of really cool ideas shared by subscribers just like you. And if you've got a tip, or something that you do in your workshop that you want to share, send it on in to me and maybe if I haven't already used it, I'll use it in an upcoming video. For those of you who haven't seen that video on the flip up table, uh, the outfeed table for the table saw, that was a very popular film or a very popular video for me and I got lots of requests on that one for information. So if that's something you might be interested in, that video will pop up here. You'll be able to go and have a quick look at it and maybe something you want to add in your shop. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.